adjustments or, or reductions to corporate income tax rates, the, the argument has has always been that, that okay, if, you, if, if you're profitable and there's a certain amount of your income that's going to pay taxes, if you reduce that, then you have more income left inside your, your business that you can reinvest. You can hire more people, you can buy more equipment, you can increase your inventory, you can carry more accounts receivable, all those things. In, in theory, yeah, that, that, that makes a whole lot of sense. Um, again, I think the issue becomes to, to what degree does that happen and, and, and how, what exponential growth is there because of that. I mean, Certainly, you can look at some people that, that if or some businesses that, yeah, if they have more, they they will invest it. They need to invest it. Maybe it means less debt for that business because they've got more 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 income retained in the in, in the business that hadn't been paid out in taxes. Uh, but you also look at that and say, uh, are they just going to pay it out uh, to to the owners of the business uh, as additional compensation or as as dividends? Then you take it a step further. Well, what do those people do with, with, with that money, if and when they when they get it? Invest it in the stock market. Invest it in other things. So so, it, it's kind of all over the board. Big picture, I think the the assumption would be certainly from from a global uh, perspective. Yeah, it would be expected that that it would. Mm -hmm. There's just more revenue out there turning through the the economy. So again, I think even if you back to what I was talking about, if a business doesn't use it to expand the specific business and then turn uh, makes it more return on on the shareholders well what are they doing with that um, you know if I've got three hundred thousand dollars that, that that wasn't paid for income taxes and it, it, it it's now in my pocket well if I go out and, and invest that in um, other businesses what are they doing with it so, so uh, again from a big picture standpoint I think the argument is that that somewhere it, 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 it's increasing economic activity. Today we're considering a bill that was drafted in secret, designed with more gimmicks and loopholes than I've ever seen, and is being rushed through in a process without impact from all of us on this side of the aisle and without even appropriate impact of its true financial analysis. In many ways, to quote the president, what got us here is the worst of Washington. If you want to see Swamp 101, look at the process of this tax bill. A 300-page tax bill that was released on the eve of a holiday weekend, only days before it was marked up in committee. And over a four-day markup, Two significant rewrites of this bill were presented. One consisted of over 100 pages of changes. And a second was released a mere 30 minutes before members were asked to vote on literally its myriad of provisions. Now, less than two weeks later, we're considering that bill or a variation of it on the Senate floor. We're voting either to proceed to the bill later today and then maybe on amendments tomorrow before we even have any analysis from JCT. And we know that near the end of the debate on the floor, another bill will magically appear from the majority leader's office without any time for those of us who want to do tax reform to have a chance to genuinely review or analyze its provisions. It makes this process, I believe, enormously dishonest. And a bad process, starting with, we're going to do it by reconciliation, just with the Republican votes, is led to a bad result. The result has been described accurately by my colleagues. The benefits of this overwhelmingly accrue to folks at the top end. Millions of middle class people are hurt. The poor are especially hurt, according to the analysis done by the Congressional Budget Office, which is headed by a conservative economist from George Mason University in Virginia. It's not a liberal bunch, the CBO. The CBO has said this bill is particularly hard on the poor. It dramatically increases the deficit. It will lead to millions of people falling into the ranks of the uninsured. It has a number of provisions that are particularly harmful to Virginia.
They're, they're always, quote unquote, winners and losers. I mean, it, it depends on, on where you are and what it does for you. I mean, there are some things in the proposals that, that, that could be very helpful to, to, to some taxpayers, to others. It, it, it could really hammer, quite, quite frankly. Again, it, 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 you almost have to look at it on a case-by-case -case basis and, and see what it does what, once we ultimately know what it is. The uh, House version does away with uh, itemized deductions for medical expenses. Well, obviously, if, you, if you're somebody who's in a uh, continuing care community or a nursing home or something like that, that has the potential to be very, very significant. Uh, the Senate, Senate version doesn't have it. Where the land with that, we don't know. The, the, the mortgage interest, uh, potential changes to the mortgage interest deduction. Uh, First of all, the, the potential changes that are there, if, if you've got an existing mortgage, it doesn't change it. But it would, the, the, the house version caps the mortgage interest deduction at $500,000. That's not a big factor to people here, but that's huge if you're in a, in a, a high cost area of California, Connecticut, places like, like, like that. Uh, and again, it wouldn't affect, it wouldn't affect uh, existing mortgages, it would only be on, on new homes. Uh, another thing in there that I've heard very little about, but, but we see a lot of clients that take the deduction, there's a, a in existing code, there's a deduction for uh, uh, home equity indebtedness. You can borrow up to $100,000 and the interest on that's deductible for, for pretty much anything. Both the House and the Senate version would, would do away with that. So. Um, I, again, I, I think it goes back to, to looking at it on a case-by-case -case basis and what's there that, 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 that potentially makes a difference, either increases or decreases my taxes. For a lot of our business clients, and, and uh, I, I think they're going to see some, some tax saving. I mean, the, both, both the plans between House and Senate are pretty different when it comes through to uh, business income, uh, in particular pass-through business income, which a lot of our clients are. Um, but I think under both plans, there's definitely some potential for uh, tax savings um, there for many of our business clients. Um, also, we have some corporate clients as well, uh, corporations, and uh, that's one of the big pushes in this tax reform is cutting that rate down to 20%, which would be huge for a lot of existing corporations, I think.